What's going on, everyone? Philly Insider Podcast here. We got a special guest today, Eddie Zinn Turner, uh, NFL draft prospect in 2021. D lineman from Buffalo, previously played at Marist and Vanderbilt, two time all PFL selection at Marist. Um, I believe you got a master's degree at Vanderbilt as well. Congratulations on that, man. Wow, what an accomplishment, along with your football accomplishments, too. And hey, from Canton, Ohio. Hoping to be there at the end of your career as well. So uh, it's something sure. to look forward to. And thanks for this opportunity, man. Just tell everyone how you're doing. No question, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm just yep. feeling blessed, man. Just thankful to be in this position. You know, the, the road ain't been easy, but it's been worth it. So Awesome, man. Yeah, glad to hear that. We'll, we'll definitely talk about your career and everything. I want to hear about your journey. But first, man, I got to ask you, I saw a video of you back when you were at Marist. Are you a, a big Justin Bieber fan? I can rock. I can rock with Beaver, man. He, he got some style to him, man. He, gotcha. he really got that. He bring the juice. Yeah, you listen to that new album yet? No, I haven't listened to it. I okay. just listen to the ones I hear on the radio, or you know, whenever it comes through. <laughs> gotcha. I respect that, man. I respect that. And I believe you have a you have a dog too named Esco. Is that right? Yeah. How's that? How's Esco doing? Man? <laughs> Esco doing great, man. He's sitting right here, man. He's just best dog in the world. Best dog <laughs> man can ask for. Hey, we love to hear that. I just want to want to ask you about those two things. I saw a video of you a while back when we were in Paris, and I, I saw you had the sweet life of uh, Eddie and Esco. So um, <laughs> good, good luck there, man. But, hey, let's talk a little bit more about your career and your journey, man. Tell us a little about your kind of hinting at your journey to the NFL draft just through college, even before college, just growing up playing football. What's it been like for you, man? Uh, football, football always been a gift to me, you know, since I was a young kid, like all my coaches and – people older than me was like, yo, man, like, you can you can ball. Like, i always been, like, a bigger kid and more athletic than a lot of kids. So it's kind of came natural to me. And then also, like, being from where I'm from, from Canton, Ohio, like, naturally instilled a, a aggression into me whenever I'm able to flip that switch. So right. it's just, it just led me here, man. And, uh, you know, going through high school, I was kind of underrated coming out of a small high school, a Malvern High School. And, um, you know, I – Tore up the camp scene, tore up the camp circuit, but I talked to a lot of coaches as well. But just like starting off, I just had bad grades because I had kind of had a rough start to my uh, high school career, mm -hmm. academic wise. So by the time it came to my senior year, I talked to everybody, but you know nobody really wanted to offer a dude with a one nine GPA. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up graduating like a two two. Maris gave me the opportunity of a lifetime, and I took it. Hey, I love to hear that, man. And talking about college, you played at a few different schools. So what are your what are your, kind of your big takeaways from each school that you went to? Uh, big takeaways is uh, Marist, definitely like Marist, man. <laughs> that's 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 one of the best places on earth, man. Like I'm forever grateful for the opportunity to go there. Uh, all the people I've met, guys that are going to be at my wedding there, like some of my best friends in the world. Right. Um, Maris was a very good place for me as far as like connections and, uh, you know, and even football too. Like it taught me a lot because I was coming out of high school. I actually played running back and then uh, mm. defensive end, linebacker and like all over the defensive line. So it, when I went to Maris, they put me in a, a zero technique most of the time in a one, which I wasn't used to coming out of high school. But given that now, it's giving me a staple because I am technically a nose guard through three tech going to the league. So it taught me how to play you know, over the center. And then moving on from there to Vanderbilt, uh, that was a big jump. And it, and it allowed me to see, you know, what it took, you know, to be, a you know, a, a, a next caliber type of player. You know what I'm saying? The work and the, uh, just, just going in day by day and, and understanding, like, everything was just different. You know, the standard was different. I'm thankful for uh, Coach Tarver, uh, Coach Mason, uh, Coach Hay, uh, all those guys up there. They really, you know, helped me really developed my game and to learn how to be a professional. And then uh, on the Buffalo, Buffalo was also a great experience as well. Shout out to, I still got some guys that will be on my, uh, my wedding as well there too. So everything was just all around great experience. And, you know, I'm for everything. Awesome to hear that, man. And you kind of hinted at the X's and O's a little bit with playing that zero technique, but also playing that three technique as well. Do you feel that playing at all these three different schools and just playing in three different types of schemes has kind of prepared you for the NFL level. And obviously versatility is a big thing at the next level. So you think that's kind of been uh, an advantage for you? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, just the luxury of being able to play in three completely different defenses and, like, you know, virtually mastering them, 
that that gives me a I think a leg up on the competition or anybody else out there fighting for a spot is and I adapt quick. I'm a quick adapter. Obviously, you know what I'm saying I'm not I'm not the sharpest tool in the box, but you know I'm not a dumb kid either. You know I, I learn quick and and I think that also helps too. So yeah. Love to hear that, man. And I want to ask you, too, about your knee injury that you had a couple years ago. I believe it was 2019 fall. Just talk to us about just the adversity at the time. Obviously, having an injury can kind of be like being on an island just while you're rehabbing. You want to be out there with the guys. What was that experience like? And what did you learn from it? Man, that experience, it it, it, it taught me a lot about myself. Uh, mm-hmm. it, 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 really, it really made me take a look at everything and put it in perspective. Like, hey, man, like, you know, this education is really important because you always one injury away from never, you know, playing again. So obviously it allowed me to lock in on the classroom more. And then as far as like just not knowing if I'm going to ever be able to suit up and play the same again, that mentally will take a toll on you. And anybody who anybody who uh, went through any type of injury or been through that kind of stuff will tell you like it's mentally draining. So it really taught me how to just – Perseverance, man. Like my whole life has been about perseverance and, and overcoming obstacles. So it was just another obstacle I had to overcome. Yeah, and I mean, that's what going to the next level. That's just the big thing. Just being able to persevere through any type of adversity that comes your way. And uh, it sounds like you've definitely jumped some big hurdles along your your journey so far. So props to you for that, man. And I want to ask you too. Just let's talk about your play style. Obviously, going to Marist, a lot of people haven't seen you know a lot of all twenty two film on you. Not a ton of all twenty-two film available to draft scouts and stuff like that. So tell us a little about your play style in your own words. Can you play in a three-four or four-three if asked to? Do you kind of win with your power or finesse more or your speed? What's kind of your play style look like? Can you do it all? Uh I'm I'm a I'm I would say I'm a jack of all trades. I could play the run well. I'm great with my hands and separation. Uh, I could two gap. Uh also I, I possess a a wide variety of pass rush moves that a lot of people wouldn't think for you know three hundred 15, 20 pound dude would have. So, um, yeah, like my style of play is just aggressive. I'm very aggressive. Uh, I want to win at the line of scrimmage. Um, I can I can mix it up a little bit with power. I can go speed. I got a couple moves, rep moves, spin moves, pretty much anything you can, they got out there, any type of move I, I've tried to master. I, I spent some time in the off season working with different uh, pass rush coaches, such as like uh, Chuck Smith, I, I trained for three weeks down in Atlanta with him. He really taught me a lot of things to take my game to the next level. Mm. And going along with that, I want to ask you, too, do you feel like that kind of separates your game, just being a jack of all trades, just separates you from the other D linemen in the draft? Is there something else that you feel like kind of separates you from other guys in the draft, like your motor or just your high energy, anything you, you want to kind of brag about, just put out there? Um. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of guys are either – uh, you know, one dimensional, they either a pastoral specialist or mm-hmm. a run stuffer, you know, but me, like, like I said, I, I'm just going for it. I'm a hungry dog. You know, if, if it's the ball, wherever the ball is, that's where you're going to find me at. That's a couple of clips. So you can see I'll, I'm chasing down screen plays, you know what I'm saying? From the right. backside, 20, 30 down, yards downfield coming from the backfield. So <laughs> wherever the ball at, I'm going to go get it regardless. <laughs> yeah. And Hey, that kind of leads right into the next question too. Just talking about, you know, I saw in that video, your teammates nicknamed me the big dog. Um, and obviously over here in, in Philly, I mean, I'm an Eagles fan. We're, we were the underdogs a few years ago and we won the Super Bowl. So just talk about that, you know, obviously we can talk about the X's and O's all day. But just talk about just your tenacity, your aggressive and open field, just being that big dog. And what kind of opportunity it would be like if you got an opportunity to join the underdogs on the field this, this upcoming fall? <laughs> oh, man, that would be a, a dream come true. I actually... Uh, when I was younger, my first football team I ever played on was the Eagles. We was we were the Eagles here in Canton. Gotcha. And, um, man, it, it would just bring it all full circle, man. Like a team, a team in that kind of silly, a, a, a rough and rowdy crowd. You know, Philly diehard fans, and you yes. know they expect a lot of you. And, and that's what I, that's what I bring to the table. I bring that relentless effort, that dog energy. You know, what I'm saying, like I said, I'm just an angry junkyard dog. I'm hungry, and that's why I'm coming every day, man. And I, I I come from a different type of lifestyle where you know, I wasn't afforded all the luxuries growing up. So right. anything I got to do to get fed, that's what I'm going to do. Hey, big dogs got to eat, man. You know what they say. But uh, I want to talk to you just about going to the next level too. 
Are there any nose guards or defensive linemen that you really admire in the game today, such as a Kenny Clark or a Javon Hargrave or a Fletcher Cox? Or, you know, obviously Aaron Donald's a big one, too. Yeah, obviously uh, Aaron Donald, man. I, people have been comparing me to him since I was in, like, my junior year of high school whenever he was at Pitt because I, I wasn't always, like, over 300 pounds. I was, like, right. my junior, senior year, I was, like, 280, 290. Wow. And then um, I like – I love watching Fletcher Cox, like, he, he's now he's more like my style you know what i'm saying he's big he can move uh, he's great with his hands uh there's a couple other guys i like out there too uh, dj jones uh 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 reed with the Bengals and the, uh, formerly the texan um dj reader right? yeah dj reader yep uh this, this and I, that's what i do like I, I sit at home i get on youtube and i watch some of these guys i like to watch edge defenders as well like von miller and khalil mack as far as like pass rush and hand placement, like Bosa brothers, like their techniques are just insane, all flawless. So like I like to watch a lot of those guys and implement it into my game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Quill Mack, former Buffalo guy like yourself. So, uh, yes, kind of like that. but I want to ask you going along with that, how cool would it be if you got the opportunity to play under Aaron Donald and learn from him for a year or two? Man, that would be awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't even that that would be the best case scenario, you know what I'm saying? Just to learn from the goat himself. Awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, especially just see what it, even just what his diet looks like on a <laughs> on the yeah. team. Like, I'm trying to get some abs too, man. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out that. I'm gonna be the second D tackle with abs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Pull the Zeke Elliott and uh, roll that jersey up. But um going along with just your college career, okay. going back a little bit to that. I want to ask you, You obviously you played at Vanderbilt for a year. So what was it like just being in the SEC, seeing that type of competition? Obviously, SEC is a very high level of football. What was that experience like? Uh, ultimately, it really wasn't – it It was It was great to see just the body types and to be able to control those types of blocks and, and, and feel that type of size and, and, and strength, but – Ultimately, the game of football really didn't change that much for me other than, like, you know, it was a little bit faster. But as far as techniques and plays and, and my playing style, like, it didn't really – it didn't really, you know, I didn't see that much of a difference. Hmm. Gotcha. Interesting to hear. And you talked about your some of the teammates you've met along the way at Marist, that Vandy, and at Buffalo. Um, I mean, obviously, you guys – plenty from all those schools, you got guys going to the draft this year, whether it's Malcolm Kuntz, um, Tyree Thompson from Buffalo, who I got to talk to as well, who's a great guy, and um, Dale Denningbo, I believe, from Vanderbilt as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, they're yeah. my guys. All these yeah. guys are my dudes. <laughs> didn't, Andre uh, Max. Didn't, uh, didn't butcher his name, so I'm, I'm glad about that. It's a tough name to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's a dog, though. He's a dog. People are going to know how to say his name sooner than later. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. Um, just how special is it to just be in the draft process with these guys, like you said? Uh, I've been leaning on these guys a lot for just a lot of advice and, and, and just yeah. just dealing with agents and, you know, because a lot of, like you said, a lot of the guys that you mentioned, like such as like a Andre Mance, even the former player Keyshawn Vaughn, uh, uh, you know, Jared Patterson, Koontz, yeah. a lot of these guys, are, you know, they probably get, they got higher draft stock than me, a higher ranking. So I kind of looked at them for different advice when it comes to different things, like, you know, as far as what their training regimen looked like as compared to mine, uh, what, you know, how, how, is their agent situations and, you know, what advice that I can learn from them to, to translate over into my situation. So everything's been helpful. Everybody's been great. Uh, I'm just thankful for all the friends that I've made. Like, literally, like, like I said, these guys, like a lot of these guys are really, you know, genuine friends. Like they reach out to me all the time. Hey, how's it doing? How you doing? They know I've been, you know, injured my knee and everything. They ask about the knee. So, I mean, it's just been a blessing, truly. Like I, the friends that I've made over the years have just been, I can only thank God for that. Yeah, it's fact. And Keyshawn Vaughn, hey, Super Bowl champion this year. Yeah, that's my dog right there, man. I'm yeah. proud of him. Me and him really, really hit it off. Like when I, he was actually like, he was one of my hosts when I came on my official visit to really? Vanderbilt. Yeah, so like, and then we, he actually hit me up on Twitter first before I even got to like, uh, uh, to even talk to Vandy. He was like, yo, like you a dog, bro. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Like he seen yeah. my film and then next thing you know, I started talking to Vandy and we yeah. went there. And, you know, he showed me around. He showed me all the good food in Nashville. <laughs> him and uh, Cam, him and my boy Cam, they showed me all the good food. Rocky Swings closed down now. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, good stuff. And uh, did uh, did Keyshawn talk Not about enough. talk at all about uh, Tom Brady this year or any of the guys on being around that offense on the box? Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, just like starstruck a little bit. Or? Yeah, he said because Brady Brady one of his top dudes, so he just being just being with the goat. I mean, he was just he loved every bit of that, and yeah. just like hey, he's a Super Bowl champ now. Like it's still unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? It's unbelievable to him. Yeah. 100%, man. And I, I want to talk to you, going back to the X's and O's a little bit, jumping around here. Obviously, football is a game of technique and fundamentals, right? You can be the biggest guy, you can be the fastest guy, but it doesn't matter if you don't have the little things down. And you see that sometimes when, like, a 6'5 wide receiver gets bullied by a corner who's, like, twice, he's, he's twice their size. So, but talking about you specifically with your position, just talk about some of the little things that are important, whether it's, like, hand placement, just reacting and making sure you got your, your two gaps locked down and your one gap locked down and just stuff like that, your stance, the little things. Well, I, I would think one thing that uh, helps me a lot is I'm not the tallest dude. I'm saying I stand about six foot, six, one and a half, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, but I also have tremendous length in my arms. I have a 79, 80 inch wingspan. So, and what combining that with my get off speed, I'm able to get my hands on guys and get under guys and control the blocks as opposed to, like, popping up or having to – if I was, like, a 6'5 guy, I would have to get even lower and right. have to work out another guy getting under me. But I don't have that issue. Yeah, that's huge, too. That's a good point that I never really thought of either, just being that smaller guy. And I know uh, the Eagles have Jason Kelsey, obviously different other side of the ball. Uh, he's a center, but he's a little bit smaller. But he gets the job done very well, and he's been an all-pro center for us, I mean. Definitely, that's a good point that you made. I didn't even think about that. And I want to shift over to, I believe you, you played some special teams during your college career as well. And I'm a big fan of special teams. Um, the Eagles were really bad this year, so there wasn't much else to get excited about other than the special teams. So um, I, I started to try to take, take a passion and just learning more about it. And just that third phase of the game is huge. I believe you blocked two kicks in 2018 at Marist. And I want to just hear which – just about your experience in special teams, what positions you play on there, and just how important it is to be able to contribute and take that to the next level. I mean, special teams, that can alter the entire game. That's just as important yep. as offense, defense, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's three phases of the game. You win special teams, win offense, you probably going to win the game. You win special teams, win defense. You win two out of three, yep. there's a good chance you're going to win, win the game. So, me, I just take pride in it. I just take pride in it. It's, it's – is sometimes, you know, after you've been on a long drive and, and you get scored on and it's a grind, it's like it's kind of easy, it, you know, for some guys to be able to like, oh, it's just a PAT, like let me just, you know, take this off. But honestly, I, I, don't, I don't like being scored on, whether it's one point, three points, six points. I don't give a damn. Uh, I'm trying to block it. I'm trying to stop every single thing. Yeah. So I just take pride in it. I grip my teeth. I, I dig my toes into the ground and, and I try to block it as best I can. I like – I. I played punt block before, not officially, but I like the block punts as well. Like, I love just going after the ball. And that's the difference between getting a roster spot a lot of the time, too, is can you play on special teams? Um, so it's it's a big part for you guys going into the draft, just being able to do that. So I respect that a lot. And I want to ask you, too, just draft process in general, getting an agent, like you said, still training every day, having to do pro day. You got a lot of stuff going on right now. So what's the draft process been like for you specifically? Exciting, challenging? Just tell us about your experience with it. Oh, it's just been exciting, eye-opening. It's been a bit of a challenge, you know what I'm saying, just uh, dealing with different people, different agents and whatnot. Like, I, I have my uh, training cha location changed three times. But, I mean, other than that, just being able to be in this position to be able to go train and, and able to do these things, I'm just, you know, grateful for. Like, and just to be in this position, like, you know, uh, my first time, like, talking to – to a coach, you know, an NFL coach, like I, I broke down and cried. I'm like, whoa, like this is real. You know what I'm saying? Like everything I've been waiting on my whole life, like it's coming to fruition. It's just pushing me to go that much harder. Like I said, man, like I'm a hungry junkyard dog, man. I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that must be surreal just to meet with the team for the first time. Again, like you said, you guys, I think people don't see the behind the scenes. Just you're working your whole life for this, whether it's watching film, whether it's the games on the field that people only see you at, or whether it's in practice getting drills done, whether it's just on your own time in the offseason getting stuff done. You guys are at work 24-7, and to finally see the kind of the results of that is definitely something that's a little bit surreal for the first time, and um, I'm sure it's just uh, an amazing experience for you guys. And obviously next year, 
but it's going to be even more surreal when you step onto an NFL field for the first time. So what are some of the things that you're kind of looking to work on to get to that point? And it's like some of the things you're looking to improve on as you head into your first NFL season. Uh, a lot of things I'm improving on for this season is just uh, uh, explosion. I just want to be like a like a bull in a china shop, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I want to be able to show off the athleticism for my size. Like I said, I'm I'm sitting right now like 318. I want to be able to show like I'm not just you know a one dimensional type player because a lot of times the guys that are like you know 310, 320, they try to put in just like a run stuff and category. I want to show change that narrative. Like you know, big boys, we can rush the passer too. So that's one thing I'm working on explosion and, and pass rush because it's a passing league. You know, you can't get after the quarterback, you know, it's going to limit your, your bank account a little bit. So I'm trying to get, I'm trying to expand that bank. Yeah. hundred percent. You're not going to be facing Lamar and the Ravens offense who are run first every, every game. It's going to be mostly passing, like you said. And um, going along with that, one more question for you, Eddie. I'm sure, like you said, or like I said, it's just going to be surreal next year when you put on that uniform you go out there, you're getting warmed up, and you just look around and see a crowd around you, and um, you get ready for that first NFL snap. That's going to be an amazing feeling, kind of like a movie, I bet. So I want to ask you, what are NFL teams getting in Eddie Zinn Turner um, if they decide to draft him this year and bring him onto their roster? Man, they're getting a good dude, a man with honest integrity, hard worker, blue-collar guy. It's the hungry dog, man. Like, if – I'm, I'm here to I'm, – I want to change the organization. I don't want nothing to be easy. I don't want nothing to be handed to me. I want to work for everything I got, and I want to be a part of change. You know what I'm saying? I want to really – I want to really take it there. Like I said, or you said, I want to end it where I started it, right here. I was born Tim and Mercy, not even a mile down from uh, where the Hall of Fame at. So my whole goal is to finish it where I started at. So they're going to get a hungry junkyard dog and somebody that's going to come out at full force every day with that blue-collar work ethic. All right, well, Eddie, this is step one and getting to getting back to Canton to end your career. I'm excited to see where you land. Wouldn't mind if you came to my Eagles. Well, I shouldn't say wouldn't mind. I would love if you came to my Eagles, man. That'd be I'd have to get a jersey right away. But um, hey, I'm excited to see wherever you land, man. It's gonna be fun to watch you play some NFL football next year on Sundays and just see you improve each year and just be that hungry dog. I mean, th those are the types of guys that stick around in this league, man. You keep that attitude, you keep working. You're going to stick around for a long time, especially with the special teams as well, man. I, I've got a lot of hope in you. Everything I read up on you before it took, or I asked you for an interview, man, I mean, I was like, this guy's a dog. This guy's a dog. I, I got to get him on the podcast sometime. So I'm, I'm glad you were able to come on, man. I'm super excited for your NFL career. And I want to ask you anything you want to say before we sign off here. No, sir, man. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate you. God bless. Of course, man. God bless you too. All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. As we always say after every uh, podcast, run, baby, run, fly, go, fly. We'll see you guys later.